The following program is intended for mature audiences. A Democratic Republic of Sports. The Sportsocracy with ESPN Asheville hosts Tank Spencer and Jeremy Green. And welcome into the Sportsocracy. I'm Tank Spencer. Jeremy Green's alongside, as always, and we are in the Wicked Weed studio, wickedweedbrewing.com. Drink different. It is week eight. No, week, week seven. seven. You're Damn. close. I'm close. Week seven. Well, didn't say week 14. Sorry, I'm week on, I, got, I got college football running through my head. It's week seven. Yeah, can we just fix that to where it's, you know, the same fucking number? Right. Run congruent, yeah, just please. Run at the same time. Stop and maybe don't do like week zero shit. Yeah, don't do that. Anyhow, week seven of the NFL football season. Week six in the books with, of course, the great Monday night football capper that we had between the buffalo bills and the tennessee titans and that's that's what everybody's hinging on everybody just wants to know jeremy are you going to stick to your word are you going to stick to your word and say that a loss by the buffalo bills will not remove them from number one i battled it and you'll just have to stick around and see if i stayed true mm-hmm. stayed true to my word or not because mm-hmm. i'm not gonna lie i battled it aggressively yeah just have to wait and see uh not a whole lot of movement at the bottom but we have a new team at the bottom of my power rankings i'm curious to see if there's a new one at the bottom of your power rankings jeremy green wow oh the houston texans have fallen to 32. the houston tejans good good god they're bad I mean, that, name one thing that team does well. Lose. I mean, they do lose well. Can't. Can't. Hurts. They are fucking awful. They are hor- They are awful. And, and you know what makes you know what makes the horridness of the Houston Texans even worse? What's that? That you're playing a third round rookie who doesn't look like he belongs in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Plus, you're playing this mishmash band of bullshit like Mark Ingram. It, I, I will give him credit. At least you released a couple old guys. Hey, they cut Whitney Merciless and they cut uh, Andre Roberts. Oh, okay. So, hey, there's, right. a, there's a couple old bastards that you're not allowed to play anymore. That's sweet. <laughs> uh, I mean, did you send them to the retirement home? Uh, did you cut them so that they could work as graders at Walmart? Right. I'm waiting on Mark Ingram. I'm waiting on Mark Ingram to be, be next. But, no, he's got to be the feature back of the 32nd best team in the NFL. God almighty. It's driving me absolutely insane to continue to see Mark Ingram get 15 to 20 carries a week. Do you know how many running backs in the NFL have more carries than Mark Ingram? Eight. It is exactly eight. Yes. Do you know who he has more than? This is a fun list. I know he has Uh, more than Miles Miles Sanders. Sanders. (laughs) Miles Sanders is way down there on yon list. Oh, yeah. Uh, He has more carries than James Robinson, Aaron Jones, Damian Harris, Darrell Henderson, James Connors, 14 on this list. Sweet God. What is, what is wrong with you people? Uh Uh-huh. Stop. That's Cliff Kingsbury. Stop with these bad running backs. (laughs) Houston Texans are God awful there. Jeremy's 32 on the, on, on, on the They're terrible. I mean, the the Texans are bad. They're not going to win another game all year because Jacksonville is legitimately better than them. Yep. Uh, And that should tell you everything you need to know about the Houston Texans. They weren't my 32. Detroit was yours? Nope. It's the Miami Dolphins. Oh, fuck come them. on. Fuck them. You cannot lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars and not end up as 32 on my list. I mean, I have them at 28. You're awful. They, they are bad, but right now you're telling me if the Miami Dolphins line up with the Detroit Lions, you would take Detroit. E- easy. God, you were so overreactionary. Can we just call this <laughs> overreactionary power rankings and do one for you? Miami's bad, okay? I, I'm not saying that they're not. The reason that I do a bottom 10 is because, to me, these 10 are just hapless as hell. Yep. It's good to see the Seattle Seahawks finally cracked your bottom 10. With no rusty shackle forward. Yeah, who do you want to talk about here? The Detroit Lions or the Miami Dolphins? You want to go up my list or yours? Or? No, let's, let's go your list. The Detroit Lions. They're 31 on your list, and I, I'm sorry. I, I, I just can't have them there. I still feel like there's something to this team. Take the, Okay, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with people when they voted for Biden. Explain <laughs> to me how you don't have the Lions 31 or 32 without saying Dan Campbell's name. Right. 
You can say any DeAndre other word Swift. in the English language. DeAndre Swift. See, I did it. And now you're regretting it. And it no, I'm not, because it pains you to do it. <laughs> DeAndre Swift has 65 carries this entire season. Yeah. He's averaging 11 carries a game. Uh-huh. Now he's got some catches. I was going to say, how many touches? That. They're terrible. Defensively, they don't even look like an NFL team. Mm-hmm. I mean, they try. I'll give them that. They just have such a talent deficit. Agreed. But, I, I, I mean, I will say kind things. I do think that better days are ahead. Right. It's not going to suck forever. I mean, this past week they got shellacked. I get it. Yeah, by the Bengals. Yeah, but the Bengals are better than we thought they were. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, where okay. are they at on your power rankings? I think, I think we're going to have to wait a little while before we get there. You're not wrong. Right. I, w- I refused to tell him where I had the Cincinnati Bengals ranked because I wanted to see his face live on camera when I showed it. Uh-huh. Because it's going to be higher than I have them. Uh-huh. It is. It is. I believe in I, I I I believe in Detroit. They are going to win games. Two games. They're going to win two games, and it will put them above the rest of these teams that are you down care at to, the bottom. Uh, you care to elaborate on who those games are going to be against? <laughs> let's let's just do it one at a time, shall okay, we? Okay. All right. At the Rams. No. Mm-mm. No. Uh, Eagles. <laughs> You don't actually believe that. No, I don't, but I need to find At one the somewhere. Steelers. No. At no. the Browns. No, huh? Bears. Well, I don't know. Maybe the Browns. No, no. Bears. You do realize that we already did that? Hey. They weren't even It's hard to beat a team twice. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll give you the Bears. All right, the rest you. of their schedule is the Vikings at the Broncos, the Cardinals at the Falcons, at the Seahawks, and the Packers. Oh, Falcons. At, on the road? Yeah. You're not? taking them to beat Matt Ryan on the road. Why not? And, and they're in a down. I will bet without seeing the line. I don't care what the line on that game is. <laughs> I will bet that game for any amount of money you want to bet. Any. I, unless Matt Ryan dies or is abducted by aliens, I will take the Falcons in that game. I'm going abducted by aliens for 200, Alex. Just remember, remember that it was said. <laughs> Detroit's just bad. They're listless. I, they're I mean, and now look, I, I, I've said this. I'm going to keep saying this just in case some Lions fan sees this has never seen this before. I firmly believe the Lions have the right brain trust in place, but you have got such a talent deficit. Yep, and you got to find a quarterback. Yeah, because Jared Goff's not good. Yeah, it's become apparent that Jared Goff cannot be the long-term that, solution. You, you, you remember that time that I said there wasn't that big of a talent discrepancy between Jared Goff and Matt Stafford? I'm going to cede that to I was drunk at the time, Alex, <laughs> for $5 billion. Which you very well could have been. You never know. I mean, it's like playing roulette. You just never know no, when that's It's not like playing out. roulette unless you play uh, black or red. Because you got a 50-50 shot. <clears throat> 60% of the time. Works, works every, time. every time. I had the Jacksonville Jaguars at 31. I don't. I I mean, and yeah, look, I have them at 30. Yeah. I'm not falling for this win in London uh, tremendously. I do I do still believe in Trevor Lawrence. Uh-huh. I do believe in James Robinson. Mm-hmm. There uh, Josh Allen seems to be playing his ass off for, you know, what little that matters on that god awful defense. Right. I mean, he's just working for his trade. He's working toward the trade. That's yeah, coming he's next trying to year. build up his value so they can trade him for draft picks. Right, and, and that's fine. Jacksonville has a player in James Robinson that the other two players, the other two teams I just listed, don't have. Mm-hmm. James Robinson can consistently get yardage running between the tackles. The Lions don't have that. The Texans don't have that. Mm-hmm. Jamal Williams is fine. DeAndre Swift is fine. But James Robinson is one of the top twelve running backs in the league. Okay. I, I like some pieces of this team. Just yet again, you have a massive talent deficit. Right. This is what happens when you draft this poorly for this long. And that's just where they are. Okay. And there's, I, I mean, I could sit here and try to say nice things. Hey, you got to win. Yay. I had it in the money line. I told you it was going to happen before it happened. You did. Numbers. It's just predictable that you go away from the media in your town and then mm-hmm. guess what you come back and just just sit around and wait for urban meyer to do some more dumb shit yeah which is gonna come 100 it's gonna, gonna come. come number 28 on the power rankings respect the grind 
Number 28 is the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, well, you skipped the Giants, who are 29. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the New York Giants are 29. You, yeah, I mean, everybody's dead on this team. They're all hurt. There's legitimately nothing nice for me to say. I, I don't have anything nice to say. Aziz Ojolari. He's been playing well. Okay. That's the nice thing you can say. The line's bad. Mm-hmm. They Daniel have no Jones is back. bad. Mm-hmm. Devontae Booker's not an NFL running back, yep. and I'm starting to question Joe Judge. I at least thought you had the coach right. I'm starting to wonder if I didn't speak too soon on that. Why? What have you seen in the last week that has swayed you this to say maybe quit. not? This team has quit. NFL teams don't get beat by five touchdowns. Mm-hmm. I mean, they just don't. Uh, there's a reason that lines don't go above two touchdowns because NFL teams don't get beat like that. And and you've got players like Leonard Williams hushing the crowd. Dude, they should be booing you. Mm-hmm. You're fucking brutally bad. And it's New York. And you've played there forever. It, it's just... They have a right to boo. Yeah. They're paying the highest t- ticket prices in the NFL to watch you get smoked. Mm-hmm. And the bad thing is, this is one of those teams that's stuck at quarterback for a while. This is not just a, oh, hey, we can tap out on Daniel Jones and maybe we'll find a Kirk Cousins on the trap trash heap. Those are going to be few and far between. We're doing quarterback power rankings tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you right now, we've talked we talked about this vaguely on the ESPN radio show yesterday. The discrepancy between the top ten and the rest of the league is staggering. Right. And if you've got even a half-ass quarterback, they're not going anywhere because there's nothing in the draft. There's nobody coming up free agency. I mean, you got Aaron Rodgers and Deshaun Watson. And I'll be honest with you, I don't see how Aaron Rodgers doesn't go to Miami because mm-hmm. they're not going to want to deal with Deshaun Watson. And they don't have the draft capital to do it anyway. Right. Uh, I couldn't knock the Giants too bad for losing the way that they did. I've, uh, I feel like that's kind of how the score is supposed to be between a top team in the NFL it was and 38 one of these to three teams. Yeah. It was 38-3. to three. Uh-huh. Even the bad teams don't get beat like that. The Jaguars don't get beat like that. <laughs> it was just listless. I watched a lot of it. Right. I mean, I understand the Rams are a great team, but sweet God. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just laid down like an old dog next to the radiator. I mean, the Dolphins got beat like that. 23-20? to 20. To the Bills? You don't remember that game oh, from a couple weeks ago? Nothing, and your quarterback got knocked out in the, from the first drive of the game. Mm-hmm. You brought in a backup who probably hadn't run a play with one wide receiver on that team. Right. You don't see how there's a difference there. You came in with a game plan of the players that you had minus Kadarius Toney. Mm-hmm. And I understand he was a probably a big part of that, but he was hurt coming into the game. Right. And you had nothing. You had no solution for them. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about this for. 10 minutes before this game. Cooper Cup is going to kill you. Mm -hmm. You had nothing. And it wasn't even a high-level offensive game plan for the Rams. It was just, hey, we're better than you. Watch this. We're going to squish you like a bug. Yep. And they did. Yeah. Yeah, the Giants are terrible. Of course they are. I mean, be really honest with yourself. Uh, They play the Dolphins. Right now, those two play on a neutral field. You have to bet your house on one of those teams. Who are you taking? I think I'm taking the Giants. I'm not, and it's not even close, and it blows my mind that you just said that out loud. <laughs> yeah. Daniel Jones would turn the ball over six times. He had one bad game. He hasn't had a good game in two damn years. Oh, he threw for a bunch of yards. whoop de fuck He's not a good quarterback. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying he is a good quarterback. I'm just saying that well, was I mean, the... I got news for you. I had the Giants here last week. Yeah. I didn't move them down. They yeah. sat exactly where they were. Yeah. That game against the Rams was the first game this year that he looked like Daniel Jones of last year. I don't agree with you. Okay. I, he had, Okay, so he's thrown for some yards. He didn't turn the ball over as much. Mm-hmm. Were you ever legitimately scared at no. anything he was going to do? No. No. I'm not trying He's to make a 62 percent completion guy that dinks and dunks like a motherfucker. I'm not trying to make the case that they're good. I'm just saying I think they're not the worst team in the NFL. I don't know them as the worst team in the NFL. Well, they're no. the fourth worst team. In the the NFL. Fir- fourth worst team in the NFL. <laughs> the Miami Dolphins are at number 28 for you. 
How Brian Flores awesome. still has a job, I have no idea. Yeah. I, I don't see how you have that happen and you don't. I, I mean, with the, with the aspirations you had, this was like playoffs or bust. Oh, yeah. You're not just not a playoff team. You're going to have traded a top five pick. Mm-hmm. Because I don't know if you have done this. Have you looked at who they have coming up? No. I mean, they got the Falcons this week. I know that much. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think they're better than the Falcons. They have the Falcons, Texans, and Jets. The Giants and Jets. You might accidentally win some of these games. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're better than the Jets. No. I at least am afraid that Zach Wilson could beat me deep. Now, would the receiver have to run under it like a punt? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he could do that. This Dolphins team's just listless. But, I mean, you play at the Bills, mm-hmm. the Ravens, the Panthers, at the Saints, at the Titans, and the Patriots. That is six guaranteed losses. Yep. Which means you're losing 11 games if you win every other game. And I don't think they're going to. Mm-hmm. I don't think they will either. They might win this weekend. But I, I even kind of doubt that. Yeah. Brian Flores and this team have shown that all things are possible. They're also the first team I've ever seen play after a London game and not get a bye. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever seen that before. Have I you? assumed. I assumed that they were going to be on a bye this I, week. I did too. Yeah. I, I think they're the first team I've seen play in London and not be on a bye the next week. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm taking the Falcons. Now that I think yeah. about that and the amount of jet lag, I've never done a flight like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I have done a flight from California to here. Holy fuck. Yep. I feel like the dick on the dog for a, for damn two weeks. And you got beat in London by the Jaguars? Oh, yeah. God, that's that's a kill spot. I mean, at least the game's at home. The, I don't care where the game is. <laughs> I can't believe they didn't give them a bye. God, if I was a Dolphins fan, I would be pissed. Right. And they'll end up getting trashed by the Atlanta Falcons this week. And What is the line on that game? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Is it Miami minus three? Miami started as a three-point favorite. They're yeah. now a three-point dog. Oh, wow. That game has moved to a, a, a touchdown in two days. That's crazy. Good Lord. And I am drunk on the Falcons. Mm-hmm. As you should be. I don't, I don't laugh very often. Uh, that actually got one out of it. Yeah. Because Miami's the worst team in the NFL in my And they just got point. absolutely Jenna Jameson fucked by the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't think I've ever heard you use that one before, but that was, that was, that was nice. It was yeah. a special little thing you just did there. Hey, we don't have no. to talk about 27 for real long. We didn't lose this week because we Yay. didn't play. Number 27, the New York Jets. Yeah, hey, we didn't play. Uh, I, I'm going to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I can see the Jets covering against New England. After that gutting loss to uh, the Dallas Cowboys, mm-hmm. I could see the Jets covering this week. Mm-hmm. Not telling you that's what the way I'm going to pick it. I can see it. Yeah. I no, like Rob be... Salah, and I don't like New England yeah. at all. Yeah. Got news for you. You're not going to wait on New England real long. Yeah, I'll be on the New England Patriots more than likely this week. Your Jets just haven't done anything to show me that they no, deserve it. They're not good. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're but awful. they're coming off a bye. Just yeah. always remember teams coming off a bye. I understand that. But still, they're not good. And Zach no, Wilson's This has weird. trap game for New England written all over it for me trap game how can you have a trap game for a team that's awful new england or the jets <laughs> new england uh because they're not as awful <laughs> as the jets but i could see them losing this game right i don't think they will because it's in foxborough right but i could see it and i could see this game being way more competitive than people think okay you got the atlanta falcons at number 26 I do think they're starting to come around a little bit offensively. I I, I said yesterday that I would be buying Matt Ryan for fantasy football. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the schedule going, you know, you got a lot of Lions, Jaguars, uh, Patriots, Saints, who I don't know what the hell they are, the Dolphins. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of that on your schedule. The Falcons may be the team we look at at the end of the year and go, wow, they were terrible. Wow, they won seven games. How the hell did they win seven games? Right. Well, you got the offensive firepower, and you've got the offensive mind behind that Calvin, team. That can, that Calvin can Ridley coming back is obviously going to help. Kyle mm-hmm. Pitts, if being Kyle Pitts, I mean, he, he's rookie tight ends. You always have to be nervous about them. Yeah. 
but he seems to be acclimating. He's going to get better with time. I think by the end of the year, you'll look at the offense and go, hey, that's not terrible. And then, you know, they'll kick the yeah. ball off and you'll go, oh, well, that was fast. Yeah. Uh, teams score very quickly on them. Yeah. How many times? How, I mean, how many times will they be in these games where their defense just, they, they can't, the offense can't keep up with what the defense gives up? Allows. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have a lot of that because yeah. the defense is terrible. Yeah. They don't have a high level player on this defense outside of Deion Jones and Grady Jarrett. Right. Just not a lot there. Nope. Nope. They are very, very bad. And, uh, and yeah, we're, we're sort of, let's see, where, where did you have them? 26? 26. 26. They were uh, 28 on mine. Mm -hmm. So they're bad. Yeah. They're just absolutely bad. Uh, the Chicago Bears at number 25. This is a team that I feel like is fooling people, and I don't understand why. Oh, but they stay close. Yeah, because their defense is not terrible. Mm -hmm. Justin Fields is fucking awful. Yep. It's week in and week out, you just don't see any growth with him. Through six games, and I know he didn't start them all, mm -hmm. but through week six, he's the lowest graded player at any position I have ever graded. I have never had a player this low. Wow. Ever. He is the worst player I have ever seen. Davis, Davis Mills, Mills is better. Davis Mills is better. Davis Mills is markedly better. Justin Fields is the lowest rated quarterback. He's the lowest rated player I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't say, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I grade every player. I grade position players and quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. So that's a little skewed. He's the worst quarterback I have ever seen. There is nothing redeeming. There is, I haven't seen a high-level decision. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen a high-level throw. Mm -mm. I haven't seen dick from Justin Fields. And I really want to look directly into that camera and go, hey, all you Bears fans that told me I was an idiot that didn't know what I was talking about. Hey, you got any, anything? Oh, okay. Oh, you all shut the fuck up? Oh, okay. That's what that's how I thought that would go. Right. But, you know, just for posterity's sake, just curious. Just curious if, you know, you'd be willing to admit in an open forum that, hey, uh, that fat guy was a hundred percent right. Mm -hmm. You're already ready to bury his career. He's just never gonna improve. Be real honest with yourself. Is he better than Mitch Trubisky? No. He's not. Mitch Trubisky didn't have the arm talent. Um, he didn't make the god-awful decisions. Mm -hmm. Justin Fields threw three of the worst passes I have ever seen against the Packers. Three of the worst passes I have ever seen. Just god-awful decisions. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're throwing it away. I don't know what the fuck you're doing. But you're, whatever it is, you're not doing it well. And guess who he gets to play this week? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's not going to go well. And he might get By the way, DraftKings defense, uh, it's Tampa Bay. Yeah. I, I tried to find a cheap one, and I went, ah, like, eh, yeah, no, it's Tampa. Mm -hmm. That could be a 12-sack, four-turnover game. Mm -hmm. It very easily could. Mm -hmm. They're a 12-and-a-half-point favorite. Tampa's and that's a, not enough. Tampa's a 12-and-a-half-point favorite. And that's not enough. No, it's not enough. Straight up, it's not enough. Jesus. Yeah, the Bears are, the Bears are god-awful, and it all starts with their quarterback. Mm-hmm. You thought that he might be something, but it's obvious that he's not yet. I, uh, I, I'll take away the yet. Yeah. It's not coming. It's not coming. It'll be the His worst. His highest rated Will game. this go down as the worst draft day trade ever? If not, it'll be in the top five. It could because Kadarius Tony's going to be a player. Yeah. The Giants get a player. And I'll be honest with you, I said this at the time, you could have sat right there and gotten him. Mm -hmm. Nobody was doing it. I talked to teams. Everybody saw the same thing I did. You know who didn't? Fans. Because they watched him at Ohio State and went, oh, he's so good. Yeah. You remember all that time that we sat in the old studio breaking, and I would break down film of Justin Fields and just get pissed? Yeah. It's everything I'm seeing right now. Yeah. It's everything that I'm seeing right now. The best game he's had in his NFL career, he threw the ball 17 times. Mm-hmm. And had a 64-yard completion. That's the one high-level play I've actually seen. That, that's the one big boy throw I've seen. Mm -hmm. He doesn't do much well. No. He has all the talent in the world, but he has no idea how to use it. Yep. 
time and time again, you can watch those games and you can watch the replays. And I think it, at one point in the game, the, the the commentators were almost making fun of him. Yeah. Of because hey, it's a joke. Look at look at this guy. He's go I mean, I'll just go ahead and tell you, he's gonna get himself killed. Right. I, I mean, I'll be really honest with you. You can't miss blocking assignments this bad. Uh, he had a pick uh, that Adrian Amos. All he had to do was get his feet down. And there, was, there wasn't a receiver within 30 yards. Mm -hmm. He was throwing it away. Mm -hmm. uh, no, you threw it directly at a safety. Off his back foot, cross his body, just every bad demerit that a scout would ever put on you. Right. And that's, that's who he is. He pulled it off. You can want it way. to be something else. Uh, you know, shit in one hand, want in the other, see which one fills up faster. Right. Uh, and, and right now, you know, uh, Justin Fields is shitting a lot about, you know, 25 times a week. So <laughs> that, that one's filling up pretty fast. Yikes. Next, the Washington football team at number 24. They're so bad offensively. The yeah. defense, I mean, they just don't do anything well. And do you think Ryan Fitzpatrick coming back will, can change any of that? It can't hurt. He can't be much worse than Taylor Heineke. Right. Taylor, I mean, here's, here's what nobody wants to say. If it wasn't for Justin Fields, I would be saying the exact same thing I just said about him about Taylor Heineke. Yeah. But there's another quarterback that's setting the bar even lower. But Taylor Heineke is not a good NFL quarterback. No. Oh, he had a great game against Tampa Bay. Yeah. Have you watched that secondary? Mm hmm. Have you, have you ever thought maybe there's a reason for that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's just, he's bad. Yeah. Antonio Gibson, I don't like the way they use him. Um, you know, I like, I, I like a lot of the pieces, but I, I, I've said this multiple times, and I think it's the second or third time I've said it this week. At some point, you have to introspectively look, look at this team and go, is it Ron Rivera? Mm hmm. Because I'm starting to think it's Ron Rivera. It's either him or Jack. He's just not a good coach. You know, he's a very likable guy. He's just not a very good coach. Defensively, they're terrible. They've atrophied since literally the minute he walked in the door. Yep. And it just it is what it is. I think Ryan Fitzpatrick will help having a veteran stabilizing force. But, I mean, what's help? Uh, I mean, might what get you, you out of the bottom ten, at least. Well, they're not far down into the bottom 10 anyway. Right. And, yeah, I mean, that will probably happen. Just looking at this. Good Lord. <laughs> Does it not look good? I don't see a game they can win. Not one? Until they, until they play the Eagles. I don't see a game they can win. At the Packers, at the Broncos. At the Broncos is a maybe. Buccaneers, at the Panthers. Seahawks, after Russ comes back. At the Raiders, Cowboys. You tell me where the wins are. Yeah. I don't see them. I, I don't care who your quarterback is. With your defense that bad, think about how many high-level offenses I just said. Oh, yeah. Shoot. Poor Washington. Damn. Lord. All right, so they may not they may not climb out of the bottom no. 10, regardless no, the of schedule, where The schedule's ugly. It's, it's, it, the yeah. sky is trash. The ground is trash. Right. The world is trash. Fuck. Right. And, that, and that's my haiku about the Washington football team. <laughs> The Seattle Seahawks at number 23. I don't know that I've ever seen a defense this bad in my life. They cannot do a motherfucking thing. No. They can't stop and, the run. And by the way, just thank you for taking Jamal Adams. I, I, can't, I can't really say enough how much I appreciate that. And, and this wonderful pick that you are about to bestow upon us is, mm -hmm. is just, that was, that was so kind. I mean, we're, we're thoroughly enjoying Elijah Vera Tucker, who, by the way, was the highest-graded guard in the NFL in Week 5. Uh, thoroughly enjoying him, and, and I'm sure we will thoroughly enjoy whoever we draft with your second top-ten pick that we have next year. Geno Smith's not, he's not a good – I mean, he's a competent backup, but you put him in a situation where he could have won the game and he couldn't do it. Right. And you got DK Metcalf tweeting at Shannon Sharp. Like, shut the mm -hmm. fuck up, dude. You're a grown man with blue hair. Like, and you don't seem to know who Shannon Sharp is. Right. I'm not one of these, oh, don't disrespect your elders. Well, I mean, he did kind of provoke you. Mm -hmm. But to not to say, I could wipe my ass with your career, dude, it makes you look like a fucking fool. Yeah. And he was the one that looked like the fool. I mean, I'm uh, just trying to be honest yeah. here. Uh, that play at the end of that game was fucking retarded. Mm -hmm. It was the dumbest thing I've seen. Why on earth would you would you try to do that? Why would you try to turn it up the field rather than get out of bounds and stop the clock? I have no idea. You do, I, I mean, I'd give you a break if you were still a rookie, and maybe that was your first game of the year. 
You're you should know that too, by You're now. just trying to do too much. I, well, I mean, here, it's not that hard to understand. You have a super limited quarterback. You don't really believe he can get you the ball again. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to do way too much. And when you try to do too much, you end up making boneheaded decisions. Yep. It's just idiotic to me. Yeah. And this team is garbage without Russell Wilson. And we all knew it was going to happen. We all knew that if something ever happened to Russ, this was going to be a trash team. And guess what? Here we are. Bottom 10 in the NFL. Mm -hmm. The next tier at number 22. Boop. The Philadelphia Eagles. I can't believe they got out of the bottom 10. I really can't believe they got out of the bottom 10. Mm -hmm. That's how bad the bottom 10 teams in this league are. Yep. Because Philadelphia with Jalen Hurts, who has an offense that is uh, hypothetical. Can I say their offense is hypothetical? Yes, you can. Because I've never actually seen it no. for extended periods of time. No. I mean, uh, you know, aside from the, like you said, a period, you know, sporadic offense. They can have some it's plays some plays to Devontae Smith, some to Dallas Go Dirt, some to Zach Ertz, and now Zach Ertz is gone. It, it's just not good all around. The defense is not good. The offense is not good. The quarterback defense, sucks. the front four is not terrible. But, I mean, I just I, I look at this and go, you have to play the Cowboys again. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I can't remember exactly who it is that Philadelphia plays going down the stretch. But, I mean, you got a couple games with Washington that mm -hmm. I, I would give you a decent chance to win. Mm -hmm. You play at the Raiders this week. That's not going to go your way. Play at the Lions next week. I'm not going to be shocked if you lose. I've had that circled as a game Detroit could win for quite some time. Uh, Chargers, at the Broncos, Saints. Now, you have a sweet little stretch where you go at the Giants, at the Jets, Washington, Giants, Washington. That Dang. could be a few wins. They'd get four or five wins there. I would say so. I'd say they catch three wins right there, probably in 6-11. and 11. Yeah. Funny thing is they have three first-round picks, and they theirs may end up being the worst of the three. <laughs> right. So Which that, at least I mean, that's, something to, that, that's something to hang your hat on, and, yep. and you'll be okay moving forward. Yep. It at least gives you a little bit of hope for the future, and this is all playing out like they wanted it to. The front office, I'm becoming more and more convinced they're doing this on purpose. 100% there. They did this to show that Jalen Hurts is not a real-life quarterback. They knew. I think they knew it within a month. Mm -hmm. I would say a month into him being there, they went, nope. And they brought in Sirianni because he's going to be the fall guy. And I don't think he'll survive a year. Yeah. You can't, be, you can't be this ridiculous in your play call to where it's almost become comical how little you want to give the ball to your best player. Right. And not expect that it's going to have some pushback yeah. eventually. Yeah. Philadelphia Eagles at 22. I had them in the exact same spot on my power rankings. Number 21 for you is the New England Patriots. I've got them a little lower than this. I actually have them below the Philadelphia Eagles. Mac Jones is okay. He is a serviceable NFL quarterback. That is what he is. Mm -hmm. He is nothing more. Mm -hmm. He is nothing less. Oh, he went 10 for 10. Great. He had uh, 200 yards mm -hmm. total. The running game has been a disappointment. I, Damian Harris has not been as much of a disappointment as you, a toy, uh, up, as much of a disappointment as you think he has. Uh -huh. He just hasn't gotten the ball enough, and I know he's had some injury issues. I don't really understand understand the Ramondre Stevenson thing. I really don't. He's it's not Bill. good at football. Though. It's like, Bill. You get that right? Yeah, but it's Bill. And Bill does this with his backs. Do you know what Ramondre Stevenson's stat line looks like through three games? No. He has 17 carries. Okay. How many yards does he have? Um, I'm going to guess 23. 48. He's <laughs> averaging 2.8 yards a carry. I went super low, and I wasn't even that far off. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, 11 of those yards came on one carry. Yeah. He's just not, he's not a good player. This is Bill in a nutshell. He doesn't draft well. Mm -hmm. He hasn't drafted well in forever, and Tom covered it. Tom was the great Band-Aid. Yep. Well, now you don't have that. Mm -hmm. So now you have to go, hey, Jacoby Myers, he's, uh, he's okay. Jacoby Myers is your one. How many teams in the NFL would Jacoby Myers be the one? None. That's exactly right. This is the only team in the NFL where he would be the one. Mm -hmm. Nikhil Harry doesn't even know the playbook three years later. 
I don't know if you saw that, but there was a play where Nikhil Harry just had no fucking clue what he was supposed to do. And it should have been a delay game, but they did. by the time they got their head around the ball, it actually been snapped. And he had no clue what he was supposed to do. That's awful. I mean, it's, just, I mean, it's a joke. You, you think you're outsmarting the league, you're not. You spend all these free agent dollars. Cool. To be what? You spend all these to free be agents bad. to be, and this is what I said in the offseason. There's another team that I was dead fucking right on because yep. look at what they have coming up. Mm-hmm. You spend all these on Judon and, oh, and we got Jalen Mills, who, by the way, is the biggest punk ass. That that little shove in the back on CeeDee Lamb, you are a punk ass. Yeah. I said it when you were in Philadelphia, and I'll say it now. You are a punk ass. Well, now Matthew Judon's been good. Uh, and? and? And what's your point? Oh, you've got one pass rusher. whoop de fuck Hey, at least they hit on one of their offseason signings. Okay. And you're paying <laughs> him a bajillion dollars. Right. On a team that's going to be bad. Right. And when a team's this bad, you got to look for any positive signs you can. So I, I'm not going to knock them for the Matthew Judon thing. You spend a bajillion of dollars. Mm-hmm. You hit on Hunter Henry to an extent. Yep. You hit on Matthew Judon. Mm-hmm. And the rest of it has been an absolute unmitigated fucking disaster. Bingo. John o. Smith, uh, how, how involved is he in this offense? Not at all. There you go. You think that's a real high-level signing by Bill? Hell no. No. He was trying to get new kids on the block 2.0 mm-hmm. with uh, Mac Jones cast as Tom Brady light. And guess what you got? You got the wish version of the 2008 New England Patriots. Right. Congratulations. <laughs> you know what that'll get you? 6-11. and 11. Yep. Absolutely right. Uh, number 21, the New England Patriots. At number 20... The Cleveland Browns. Wow. I mean, this is this is pretty damn low. That team's not good. They're not good. And I've said this on air. I'll say it again right here. The reason Baker Mayfield does not want to say, oh, I'm done for the year is because he knows. Mm-hmm. If, they say, if they see Case Keenum in this offense, he will be unemployed. Yeah. They're the same quarterback. Especially with him hurt. Mm-hmm. Now that he's hurt, it's even worse. And the injuries just keep piling up for this team. Mm-hmm. Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt's on IR now. So you'll be playing. Got, so, so Thursday night you play the Broncos with a sweet offense of Baker Mayfield with one arm, Dearness Johnson, Donovan Peoples-Jones, who I actually like, uh, Rashard Higgins, and the ghost of Odell Beckham Jr. passed. Mm-hmm. Cool. I'll take the Broncos. Uh, and I didn't really even have to think about that. Especially argument. with Jedrick Wills and Jack Conklin out. Oh, yeah, and when Von Miller looks at uh, a, beat, uh, a beat writer and says, I don't know who the tackle is I'm playing this week, but I'm going to kill him. Good luck. Yeah. Hey, Baker, are you sure you don't want to sit this one out? Because I don't really think it matters who plays quarterback. You're going to get hit a lot. Yeah, especially when that uh, shoulder is hanging by a string already. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I've seen me do I mean, it. Said, and I'll tell you right now, I can't it do- hurts like hell. Yeah. He says, I can't do any more damage to it. Are you, are you sure about that? Oh, you can't actually do any more damage to it. It is, it is what it is. I did this exact same thing. Mm-hmm. And it hurts like a motherfucker. But if he keeps doing it, is there nothing else to damage in there? Not really. Because he, he, he already said that the labrum is torn mm-hmm. and that there are some other things in shreds in there. I don't know what that means, and I don't know that he knows what that means, but he probably it doesn't, doesn't sound damn good. It doesn't sound good doesn't. to me. Can it get any worse? I would say no. I mean, I didn't do anything with mine. I couldn't even touch myself for about six weeks. So <laughs> you, you think you're going to sure play quarterback not. in the NFL? Okay. Uh I would say you're a tougher individual than I am, but right. I'm going to say I'm saying dumber wrong. Okay. But he has no choice. He yeah. knows if they see any other quarterback in this offense, it's going to look exactly the same. Right. So here we go. I still have faith in this team. I do. Uh, you what know. do they do well? Run the damn ball. No, do they do that with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt both dead? No. Are they going to do that well with Dearness Johnson? Maybe. They did last oh, year. Oh, and no Jedrick Wills. and Yeah, maybe not. There you go. Against a good defense in the Denver Broncos? Good right. luck with that. Right. I have no faith in this team. I haven't. I've tried to tell you. Mm-hmm. They beat up on bad teams. Okay. I feel like 20 is a little to too me, low. To me, they're like, a, they're like a heavyweight boxer that'll only fight lightweights. 
Uh, cool. Okay. You can beat the hell out of somebody you're 100 pounds heavier than. All right, let's see you with somebody your size. Oh, we did. And minus a Hail Mary, you got beat by 30. Yeah. That's, That's who you are. It's not a bad analogy. Beating up on the bad teams. They beat the hell out of bad teams. Have them on your, and now you don't have them on your schedule like you did last yeah. year. The 12 teams below them on the power rankings, yeah, you beat them all. Mm -hmm. uh, the teams in front of you, I don't think you can beat any of them. Consistently. Okay. At number 19, the Denver Broncos. Hey, that team we were just talking about. Yep. The Denver Broncos still have the good defense. Teddy Bridgewater's been, yeah. He's come back to, to earth. He's yeah. come back to what he was. Yeah. This is what this team is. The Raiders are markedly better, and they just showed it. No doubt. That's that, that's what I tried to tell you all all season long. Mm -hmm. This Denver Broncos, this is how much quarterback matters. Because Teddy Bridgewater had to be a superhuman against three bad teams to fool you that this team was good. Mm -hmm. Not. They can run the ball reasonably well. I like Javante Williams. I like Melvin Gordon. I like the weapons. Mm -hmm. You don't have the trigger guy. And without that, a gun is only as viable as the one shooting it. Right. And you don't have anybody shoot it. And cool, you got all these weapons. Sweet. I ain't making the ball. Yeah. Uh, Cortland Sutton, it's good to see him finally producing. Yeah, if you have him fantasy football, run like the wind. I would trade him for anything I could get. And Jerry Judy's coming back next week. That is why I would trade him for anything <laughs> I could get. <laughs> And Noah Fant and Albert Ogoibanam and Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon. There's just a lot of mouths to feed in what is a mediocre offense. Yeah. Will they have big weeks? Sure. Mm -hmm. I could see Cortland Sutton having two more big weeks. I could see uh, Jerry Judy having a couple big weeks. Mm -hmm. But they're not going to be consistent. Right. You're never really going to know when they're coming. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I, I think they're going to get a win this week. And I still look at the team and just go, you're back side of the playoffs, maybe if everything goes right. Mm -hmm. But then I start doing the math and go, you're not better than the Chiefs. You're not better than the Chargers. You're not better than the Raiders. Mm -hmm. You're not better than the Titans. You're not better than the Colts. You're not better than the Ravens. You're not better than the Bengals. You're not better than the Bills. You're not better than the Steelers. Mm -hmm. They're not better than any of them. Yeah. That puts you at 10 in the AFC. Mm -hmm. So you would need a small act of God. This is not anywhere close to a playoff team, in my opinion. They're 10 in the AFC. If a lot of things broke right and the schedule broke right, you can make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Because the difference between 7 and 10 is going to be about two games. So you need to win two, <clears throat> two games that you're not supposed to. And you need the teams in front of you to lose games they're not supposed to. Yeah. That is the definition of an average team, and that's what I think Denver is. Yeah, Denver is at 21 on my power rankings this week. <sighs> it just doesn't look good for them. Nope. I had Seattle at number 20 on mine. You had Seattle at 23. You get the Carolina Panthers falling to 18. I wanted them further. Yeah. I did. I wanted them further. And because actually, until Christian McCaffrey comes back, you got what you got. Mm -hmm. But that's where you belong. There's still a team that can score points, though. We just haven't seen it. it, it they've been, I, I mean, Sam Darnold has been harassed the last two weeks. The offensive line is obviously not good. We've talked over, uh, you know, ad nauseum about how bad this offensive line is. It's bad and it's getting worse. Right. And DJ Moore dropping a boatload of passes last week. Robbie Anderson doing the same. It does. Robbie look Anderson's like, been horrid. Yeah. It does. And look I love like it's the getting guy, but better. Good Lord, you've been bad. Uh, if you look at Pro Football Focus grades, where does Sam Darnold fall in? Who's ahead of him? Who's right behind him? Oh, this God. is, by the way, with that torrid three-game start start of the season. Yeah. I'd say he's somewhere in like 18. Too high. Too high. 23. Too high. 25. 25. Right behind Baker Mayfield, right in front of Jared Garf. Jeez. That's about, and I actually think you've been worse than that. Mm -hmm. With no Christian McCaffrey, this offense is so dependent that you can't do anything getting away from it. Oh, so Chuba Hubbard can run between the tackles. Fantastic. Uh, you've got a series of, uh, of balls that are coming out on hot routes because your line is so bad. The receivers do not seem to understand how to adjust to that. And then you're just constantly putting the defense in bad positions. Yep. I think that Stephon Gilmore coming back, or, or Stephon Gilmore coming in and returning from injury will help. The defense is going to be better because you need a number one corner because you don't have one. Right. Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson just beat your brains out. Mm -hmm. They had, two, what, 210 yards combined or something like that? Yep. Having that number one corner that can deal with a number one receiver is going to be a big deal. That being said, I don't know 
that the ceiling on this team, knowing that there's two more games without McCaffrey, is still the playoffs. But I mean, you just got to look at how good the NFC is. Right. The Dallas Cowboys are better than you. We've already seen it. Packers, Saints, Buccaneers, mm -hmm. three teams from the West. Mm -hmm. That leaves you at eight. Now, do I think you're eight? Absolutely, I do. I think you're better than the Seahawks. I think you're better than a series of other teams. Right. The good thing is, before Christian McCaffrey comes back, they do have winnable games on the schedule. But they do. And They've if got... you get lucky and win those and you get back to the form that you had when he was in, we could be talking a different story in two or three weeks, but I'm going to have to see it. Yep. It, it's hard for me to believe a running back's doing this much, but when I watch the tape, it's abundantly clear. Yeah. It's just hard for me to believe that that is the only thing that has changed and that he's just going to come back and everything's going to be hunky dunky. Yeah. So it, it's a little bit of projection. But it's also a little bit of watching the tape has been hard to do. They're in New York this week to take on the Giants. Then they go to Atlanta the next week. Those are two winnable games. And then you get New England. That's also, also a winnable, a winnable game. game. So, I mean, this 3-3 three and three start that we're at, we could very well see this team being 6-3 and three when they roll into Arizona, which they're going to lose. But then you get Washington. Then you get at Miami. Then you get Atlanta again after the bye. I mean, that's... They, they, can, they can still roll some some big wins off here. They do. They and put then, themselves in a bit of a hole. And then let's say everything comes back to normal. You know, Christian McCaffrey comes in and they find some kind of a spark. If you can steal two of the last five games on the schedule, because it gets pretty rough at the end of the year when you've got at Buffalo, Tampa Bay, at New Orleans, at Tampa Bay. I mean, that last game against Tampa Bay, it could be that could be a winnable game. You yeah, don't know who's going to play. Care. Right. So, like I said, this is the eighth best team right now in the NFC, even with it, how everything sits. Yeah. Could they still make the playoffs? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you need some things to break your way, and you need to figure some things out. We're not too far off on the Carolina Panthers this week. I had them as high as I possibly can, and I had them at 16. And to me, it's just too high. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you've got them in front of teams that I, I can't get behind. Yeah, you're right. You're right, I do. The Pittsburgh Steelers are 17. Oh, my God. I just saw where you have the Cincinnati Bengals. Sure do. Stop that. Sure do. <sighs> you tell me. Oh, my God. Who should be in front of them? I know. I know. I, I mean, just. I still have the Panthers in front of them. You and shouldn't. I don't care. If they played right now, I got news for you. I'd take Cincinnati. I'd bet <laughs> anything you want to bet on it. Right. Because Trey Hendrickson would live in Sam Darnold's nightmares. Yes, he would. But we'll get to the Bengals in a minute. Yep. Here's the thing about the Steelers, and this is what I tried to tell you. Well-coached teams are teams you should never throw dirt on. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as you do, they will show you why you shouldn't. Ben Roethlisberger looked like a legitimate NFL quarterback. Now, was it against the worst defense in the NFL? It sure was. It sure was. Mm -hmm. But I saw enough in the arm. I, the, the first half game plan was enough for me to go, that, just do that. For, for the love of God, do that. Right. Because there are winnable games on the schedule. You can beat the Browns. I think you can you, you can take the second game from the Bengals. They're winnable games. Do I think this team's a playoff team? No, I don't. I think they'll be one of the first teams on the outside looking in because mm -hmm. the schedule is brutal. But as long as you've got TJ, uh, as long as you have TJ Watt, as long as you have guys like Minka Fitzpatrick, that defense is going to keep you in a lot of games. Yeah. And as long as you've got Najee Harris, if you can figure out a way to get him any kind of legitimate running line. He's going to keep you in a lot of games and keep games close, and then experience wins out. Yeah, the game against Seattle just didn't prove much to me because that oh, team it did is to me. so bad. Oh, it did to me. I saw enough of what Ben's arm could do. I thought his arm was dead. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you know exactly what dead arm is, but that is, that is a thing that happens to quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. You just lose the juice in your arm. Mm -hmm. Ben doesn't have that problem. He flicked, I can't remember who it was. Uh, I think it was to Deontay Johnson. I mean, it was a flick of a wrist and went 45 yards. Right. So I went, okay, so you can still challenge a defense deep. Now, did he need five years to throw it? Yeah, because his, his motion is really elongated at this point. Mm -hmm. But he can still do it. My faith in Matt Canada is all hinging on one half of football that I've seen against the worst defense in the league. Mm -hmm. So I'm not telling you I have the greatest bit of evidence to have them where I do. Right. But I do because I don't see who's I don't see who's behind them that should be in front of them. Yeah. 
I would take just about any team right now in the NFL over the Seattle Seahawks without Russell Wilson and with that defense being there. And I don't disagree with you. And, and the so mismanagement the that, of Jamal Adams. And, right. And so the fact that they went to overtime and beat them, I didn't give them a whole lot of points for that. They did rise in my power rankings because, you, I mean, you had to. Because it did show something. That more to me says how bad the bottom half of this is than mm -hmm. it does how good the Steelers are. Yeah. Mike Tomlin probably keeps you out of the bottom ten. Just the fact he's your head coach. No doubt. Probably keeps you out of the bottom ten. And TJ. Talent-wise, um, you got some good goods. You got some bad bads. Yeah. Which is how you wind up at the turn at 17. And at number 16, top half of the league in the power rankings this week, you got the Indianapolis Colts. I hate this team. Why do you hate this I team? I hate this fucking team. <laughs> because they're good so good and they're bad is fucking dreadful. Yeah. Obviously, Jonathan Taylor, he's a superstar. Hey. And look, he did great things last week. Hey, Pete week. Carroll. Or not Pete Carroll. Frank Wright. Run the damn ball! <laughs> I had to. I had Jonathan Taylor, what, his sixth carry of the game? 83 or... Yep. Bye. Thanks for at least letting him get into the end zone on his next carry. That was mm -hmm. awful nice of you. Because mm -hmm. if you had given that carry to Naheem Hines, uh, I might have had to have drawn, driven to uh, Indianapolis and, and, and kicked you in the ding-ding. Now, can we give you a whole lot of credit for beating the holy hell out of the worst team in the no, NFL? No, but that's what you're supposed to do. No. If you're in that mediocre tier, you're supposed to beat the sin yeah. out of the really bad teams, and that's yeah. what they did. And you, and you always make fun of me for saying style points. That was style points. I, we got yeah, style because points style, style points don't really matter to me, but you should give a team like that absolutely no hope. And it yeah. really bothers me that you let them hang around for a half mm -hmm. because you couldn't figure out to run the damn ball. And you virtually never had the ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, I think that at some point, halfway through the, through the second quarter, they'd run like 15 plays total. Right. So it, just some maddening play calls from Reich. But I see the talent. Carson Wentz seems to be improving. Yes, I really is. like Michael Pittman. Uh, T.Y. Hilton seems to have escaped unscathed in his first game. And I think that opens up the offense a little bit. And the defense has never really been a problem to me. I like DeForest Buckner a lot and Darius yeah. Leonard. Uh, I don't love the back half, but the front seven is really, really good. There's potential. Good. There's potential all over the roster. There is potential. And that's the thing that, that's the thing that makes me confident that while they may not get out of this realm, they may never crawl out of this little mishmash in the middle, it does give you hope for the future. Yep. The Minnesota Vikings at 15. The offense This is, starts a series of teams that I just don't know what the fuck to do with. Yeah, the offense is clicking on all cylinders. Kirk Cousins is playing out of his mind. Adam Thielen, Justin Jefferson, it's all good. It doesn't seem to matter which running back they run. They, they can be successful with either Dalvin Cook or Alexander Madison. The biggest question is and will remain the back half of their defense. Which is not good. Uh, here's a fun stat. They have 21 sacks. Yep. They had 23 all year last year. They have 21 in six games. Mm-hmm. So, Daniil Hunter and the pass rush, they figured that out. The problem is that the back half is not good. Yeah. And they're just inconsistent. I, I feel like uh, currently, according to Pro Football Focus grades, Kirk Cousins is the third best quarterback in the NFL. Do you find that to be sustainable? No. Because I don't. No. I, I don't value that to be sustainable. Uh, and, and if you look at what he's been over his career, it's really not. I mean... It, it, by pro football focus grade, he's a 90 right now. He hasn't been, I mean, the last two years, he's been an 83 and a half and an 84. Yeah. And, and that, I know that's not a great quantifiable thing, but that basically knocks him down. He's played like a top five NFL quarterback. He's not. Mm -mm. He's top 15. He's on the high side of the top 15. Yeah. You know, right top, outside of the top 10. Yeah. But that's who he is. And, and I feel like that regression is going to come eventually. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm afraid that when it does, these close games that you win, like Carolina, are going to become close losses. Right. I like but the good God, Justin Jefferson's good. I'm yeah. just going to keep saying that is my fait accompli for saying <laughs> I didn't like him coming into the draft. Right. Uh, I've, you know, I, I've always liked Kirk Cousins for some reason. You like that? Yeah. 
And I don't know why. I, I, I just don't know why. And and now he seems to be playing like an actual real threat real boy. at the quarterback position. Oh, this is the time I've been waiting for. The Cincinnati Bengals. Mm-hmm. At number 14, it seems odd to say... But how can you argue terribly? Oh, I can give you the argument. I mean, if you want to argue it, I can give you the argument. The argument is look at their schedule. It is absolutely a murderer's row. Yeah, but that comes later in the process. Not really, because they play the Ravens this week. That's what I'm saying. So far this season, this is where they've been. They start losing these games, they're going to fall down this list. Well, and I'm I'm really glad you said that, Mm -hmm. because that's not really how this list works for me. This list comes into, if you played head-to-head, who would I take? Mm-hmm. I don't really see a way that the Bengals aren't in the top 17 or 18. Because I'll be, just look at the list as it currently sits. Mm-hmm. I don't see a way that I would take the Denver Broncos down against the Cincinnati Bengals. I don't, because the offense is really good. Mm-hmm. And the defense is good enough. Mm-hmm. Now, that being said, of their remaining games, there are one, two, three, four, five, six. They have six left against teams that are ahead of them. They have three more left with teams that are within five of them. Mm -hmm. That can either end... I don't see a way that they finish better than nine and eight. That being said, you're markedly improved markedly improved Mm -hmm. and the more I get down the road I'm like oh I don't know that you're gonna fire Zach Taylor which makes me really sad because I really want to see Joe Brady with this team Carolina Panthers fans oh they can have him Uh, okay yeah yeah I'll remind you you said that at the end of the year they're going to fire Zach Taylor because I don't see a shot that they end up with nine wins on the year well here's the problem if they go seven and ten do they fire him I'm going to say no. We should. <laughs> this is the Cincinnati Bengals. Well, Just remember, it. should understand. does not play into their narrative. They can't, they did keep Marvin Lewis for a billion years. Yeah, but I still think there's a marked difference between those two. And they I ca- hated Marvin Lewis at times. They so. kept Bruce Coslett for way longer than they should have, too. Right. This goes back a long time. And that's my fear. Because I could easily see a path that with a with a better coach, you could be an even better team than you are now. Mm-hmm. But, look, uh, but I, mean, I will say this, regardless of anything, regardless of anything that happens, you have a lot of f- cornerstone pieces on this team. Joe Burrow is a cornerstone piece. Right. So is Joe Mixon. So is Jamar Chase. Uh, I would say Trey Hendrickson is better than I thought he was. I still, I still would rather have Carl Lawson. Mm-hmm. I mean, not this year, but... In general, I would rather have Carl Lawson. Jesse Bates, that's a guy you need to get it done with. you got to figure out the corners mm-hmm. because you've had a couple corners that have not played particularly well except against bad competition. Uh, you still have line issues. But I'm seeing what you're putting together. And I think if, I, if you're a Cincinnati Bengals fan, that's about the damn most anybody could have ever asked for. Yeah. I'm still stuck on six wins, seven wins top for this team. I see a way they go nine and eight. Mm-hmm. You're just going to have to win some 50-50 games. Now, I also think they're better than the Browns. You don't. No. I don't understand that I don't. in the least. I don't for the life of me understand how you look at Joe Burrow and Baker Mayfield and go, hmm, I'd rather have Baker. No, uh, no. I, I never said that. Mm, I would never say that. Okay. The weapons, who would you rather have? The Bengals. Cincinnati, yeah. Ability to run the ball. Oh, okay. Uh, it's, it's Cleveland, but only because you have two of them. I'm not sure I would rather have Joe Mixon than either one. No, I did absolutely. Well, that's, that's not even you. Close. I didn't say yeah. you. I said me. Oh, I get it. Joe Mixon is to me one of the five most talented running backs in the league. Oof. Okay. And now he's getting the workload. I don't really understand why you don't throw in the ball. Thanks for throwing Chris mm-hmm. Evans. You dicks. So I had Joe Mixon. Fuck it everywhere. Yeah. I don't see much difference between him and Kareem Hunt. Oh God. I disagree with you vehemently. <laughs> I know you do, and we've disagreed about this for three years. Oh, yeah, I disagree with that. But Kareem Hunt can't take full workload. Oh, he had it for one game, and uh, bye, for a mm-hmm. month. I had that problem with him when he was in Kansas City. You have that basketball player. It's the carry-on Johnson syndrome. You have that build of body that I look at and go, oh, you're going to get hurt a lot. Mm-hmm. It's nothing against you. There's nothing you can do about it. 
It's the way you were created. But, right. Oh, yeah. There's, there is certainly, in my opinion, no happenstance that the first time he had to play a starter's workload with Cleveland, he went down. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me in the least. Yeah. No, I I still believe Cleveland's better, especially if they're especially if they're going to be healthy, which they're not. They're not right now. They're not, and I don't care if they are. But they healthy. could be. I don't care if they are healthy. You still have Baker Mayfield as your quarterback. Yeah, I would rather. I would rather, and I've said this more than I mean. It's not a spicy, spicy for me. I've said this more than once. Mm-hmm. If I wanted, uh, if I wanted to pick the second best team in the AFC North, it's the Cincinnati Bengals. Mm-hmm. It's, I don't really think it's all that close. It sounds weird to say. I don't think it's all that close. Yeah. Feels gross to say. It does. <laughs> I don't disagree with you. It hurts me to say. But I've always said, I'll admit when I'm wrong. And I was wrong. All right. At number 13 on the week seven power rankings, the San Francisco 49ers. <sighs> this is a t- another team that didn't play. So, uh, you know, I don't have a whole shit ton to say about them. Mm hmm. I don't even know which quarterback I want it to be, but you're so talented. And that offense is so multiple, and I like Debo Samuel so much. I just, I mean, I can't move off of you in a bye week. So, yeah. nobody, I didn't really see anybody that was good enough to move for me to move them past you. And so, you basically sat exactly where you were. I don't know what. Th- this is one team that I don't know what you are. I, be- I, really I, I, I believe that you have a lot of talent, but you got George Kittle sitting on IR. You've got. Brandon Ayuk, who's disappeared from the game plan. You've got the running Coming back off a situation. Bye, I have a funny feeling it's going to be a Brandon Ayuk week. Yeah, you got the you got the running back situation that you don't know week in and week out. I applaud but, Mike or uh, Kyle Shanahan that he figured out. Hey, Trey Sermon sucks. Yeah, I, I mean I love that. Yeah, you wasted a draft pick and you figured it out in no time. Hey, you suck. Uh, so go sit your ass down. Yeah, the quarterback thing. I still lean toward Jimmy Garoppolo should be the guy rather than Trey Lance, but. I At think he point, makes your floor higher, but he makes your ceiling lower. Right. And then on the defensive side, I mean, obviously they have great weapons on a defense. A lot of toys. Yeah. But it's the it's that back half that I'm not sold on. I'm not either. So I really don't know what this team is. And they're going to fall quick. They're going to fall quickly if they can't start stringing some wins together. I don't disagree with you. Because they're on this three-game losing streak now, and, you know, uh, they got Indianapolis this week. And And that could be a game where you lose that one, and I'm going to think markedly different about you. And I don't don't disagree with that. I just – the the two toughest teams for me to rank were them and the next team on the list, the New Orleans Saints. Because I can't figure out which team I like better. Yeah. The bad of the Saints is markedly worse. The good of the Saints is markedly better. What the fuck do you do with that? <laughs> because it, it's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Right. It's another team that didn't play last week. So I think this one's going to play itself out over time. Mm-hmm. And that's about the only thing I can say about it. Yep. Is I think over time we're going to figure it out. Unfortunately, I uh, saw a report today that Michael Thomas looks like he's not going to be back in week seven. He, he won't. Will, he's that, still a couple weeks out. Yeah, that he will be a few weeks beyond that before he's able to come back. Yeah, he's still a few weeks out. So, unfortunately, that is the case for the New Orleans Saints, and this will this will continue. You'll continue to live in this nebulous area of we're not really sure what you are. Number 11 is the Las Vegas Raiders. I told you if you came out and showed me exactly what you showed me against the Denver Broncos, you, yep. would, you would recover a little bit, and you did. Mm-hmm. I believe this team is going to be really big pain in the ass. They're the first team that I can't figure out how you would win a Super Bowl. Because the top ten, I can all see when I can all see them winning a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. I cannot for the life of me figure out how the Raiders are going to do it. No. I, I, I love Derek Carr. I love Darren Waller. There are so many things to make Max Crosby many things to like on the defense. I just think you're missing a piece, and I can't even for the life of me figure out what it is. But I did like that you got Kenyon Drake slightly involved. It wasn't many touches, but you got him in the end zone twice. Mm-hmm. That's a start, and you took a team that you were better than, and you bounced them like a basketball on their home field. Uh, that is all I could have ever asked you to do in this weird-ass week, and I think they're going to continue doing it. I've been on the Raiders since the offseason. Nothing is going to take me off of them at this point. I can't tell you. Could they finish 7-10? and 10? They absolutely could yeah. because there has been so much weird shit happening around that team. 
that if you say definitively you know what's happening with the Raiders, you're either disingenuous or you're lying. Uh, your best proclamation, prediction, uh, sorry to go Jim Rome there for a second. <laughs> right. I, I think I've had them pretty well pegged since the offseason, mm -hmm. and I still feel like I have it, of they're going to beat the piss out of bad teams. They will consistently beat mediocre to average teams. Mm-hmm. And then you get into that weird, them and say the 49ers, or them and the Saints, or, I, and I don't know what would happen there. Them and the Bengals. Yeah. And I don't know what happened there. And so the more I see that, the more it will affirm, or it'll confirm or reject the principles that I've had on the Raiders. But until then, I, I think they're the 11th best team in the, in, in the league. I think they're a playoff team, and I think they're going to be a playoff team. I think it's a dart throw at this point as to what this team is going to end up looking like. You if said, the season you said was going to collapse, I think you would have seen it this week. Yeah, you said what pieces do they need? I would like to see them with a with a star wide receiver because I don't think they have one of those. Henry they Ruggs do. His is getting Waller. <laughs> right. He plays as a wide receiver. I mean, I get that, but the whole Brian Edwards, uh, Hunter Renfro. I'm fine I mean, with those Hunter are, Renfro. Those he's are a very filler quality. Guys. He's a very quality slot receiver. Mm -hmm. fine, fine with Brian Edwards. I think he's an athletic, talented kid. I just don't think Henry Ruggs is a one. I think he can be. And, and I think the big play potential being there and, and the mixture of him and Waller, it's, it's a fine combination. Yeah. That's not really what I'm looking at. I would love for you to have a... Uh, corner. I, I don't know. I don't know what the one piece is that makes you not a Super Bowl team, but I watch you and I go, you're just missing that if I love the pass rushers. Ngakwe and Max Crosby. Yep. Uh, there's just something missing. And it's like porn. Yeah. I can't, I can't explain it to you, but I can point it out to you when I see it. Okay. At number 10 in the power rankings this week, week seven in the NFL, the Los Angeles Chargers. You cannot get beaten like that mm -hmm. and not take a tumble. Mm -hmm. Because that was awful. <laughs> I mean, it where was, would you like me to start? But did it say more about the Chargers than it did about how the, the Ravens can still flex the defensive muscle? Here would be what would bother me. The Ravens have basically allowed every team they played to do practically anything they wanted to. Mm -hmm. Not you. Why? Because I have a I have a thought. Okay. I think your game plan sucked. Straight up, I I, I said this on on Monday. Mm -hmm. I put this loss on, directly on the shoulders of Joe Lombardi and nobody else mm -hmm. because I think this game plan sucked. You walked in uh, against a team that has struggled with shifty ass little running backs like that. And you just threw the baby out with the bathwater. What do you have, seven yards or something like that? Yeah. He was irrelevant. Mm -hmm. So you became one dimensional against the team that has Marlon Humphrey. And Steven Tao, who was watching this game with me at the social, you have Keenan Allen on a, on a slot corner and I cannot remember the corner's name. He told it to me multiple times. It was your best mismatch. And it was like you forgot Keenan Allen was on the field for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make any sense. None of it makes any sense to me. Right. The run defense is bad, and that is going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. Do I think they can fix it? Maybe. How? I don't know. Don't know. I don't know. But I, 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 I like parts of this defense. I like Asante Samuel Jr. I like Derwin James. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Bo's off, coming off the edge. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot to like here. But that was brutal. And there was no way that that was not going to hurt where you fell in this. Because looking forward at number nine, yeah. Tennessee Titans. Yeah. What do I say routinely of how I grade these teams? Neutral field, who would you take? In what universe could they stop Derrick Henry? Short of hitting him with a baseball bat. Oh, the Chargers? Yeah. No chance. There you go. Short of hitting him with a baseball bat, how are you going to stop him? I mean, he might run for 250 and five touchdowns. That's And see, that's the problem. Yeah. And I can do that with a number of teams up in front of you. Mm -hmm. And I think you having a categoric weakness like that 
Here's where I think I made a boo-boo. I think Tennessee should be at eight, and yeah. Kansas City should be at nine. Yeah. And maybe maybe the Chargers should be at nine, and Kansas City sh- should be at ten. This was another three-team area that was yeah. really hard for me to differentiate. I have the I have them all in the same in the same realm, and I have them ranked Kansas City ten, Lale nine, and Tennessee. And that, and that might be the right call. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, there is some caution with me with Tennessee, of, and of which I've said it so many times that I'm not going to say it again. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the good is good. Mm-hmm. The good is really good. The good you just beat with last week's number one. And so that, that earns you a spot in the top ten. And the defense also stepped up. and they. I mean, I get that stepping up is not giving up 35 points in a game. Yeah, right? and you gave a billion yards up to Josh Allen. And, sure. And I, but I still is. don't buy the, the the defense. Right. But when but here's the thing: when the game mattered, and they had to step up, they stepped up and made a big play. And and that's fine. That's mm-hmm. all well and good. My problem is that I don't think you can consistently do that. Mm-hmm. And that's why they fall in at nine. Right. Uh, and, and this might have been a little punishing the Chargers for getting just shellacked mm-hmm. and rewarding the Titans for a, a good victory. Mm-hmm. And number eight, I'm probably rewarding you because you have Pat Mahomes and Andy Reid. Well, there's no doubt. I mean, I mean I, I'm still looking at this team going until I see the category, the, the 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 just cataclysmic loss. Right. I don't think I can believe that you've fallen this far off the rails. But the game with Washington was much closer than it should have been. Mm-hmm. It stayed close for entirely too long. But I still look at it and go, you know, I just feel like you're going to figure something out. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. I don't have the foggiest of a clue. Maybe fire Spagnola because the defense fucking sucks. Yeah. But I just I, I look at the sum of all parts and go, you're gonna figure something out mm-hmm. with Chris Jones and Frank Clark and uh, Tyron Matthew. You have players. It's not like you're bereft of players. No. There's just, in my opinion, it's a schematic problem. And for me, I I will always take talent over X's and O's. Always. Talent wins in the NFL. Right. And the Kansas City Chiefs have it. And you know what? Until they give me a reason, and I understand they have three losses. Look at who the losses are two. Mm-hmm. Oh, you lost to Baltimore. Yeah, well, guess that. Guess what? They're in front of me. Yeah. You lost to the Chargers. Yeah, they were in front mm-hmm. of you. Mm-hmm. So, I still and have you lost to the Bills, who uh, they're in front of you. Yeah. I still have the Chargers in front of Kansas City, and I'm and I can't fault and I, you and for I, it. And I'm not and, and I'm not changing on that. And look, it, it's not to say that Kansas City's out of it. When you have they're Patrick Mahomes, right? When you have Patrick Mahomes, you have this kind of an offense. It's only going to take you know a, a good stretch to get back on to get back on track and to get uh, all of these turnovers taken care of. And you know what? I actually think that they are, I mean, it's going to be closer than you want it to be. But I think they can win this week against the Tennessee Titans. They can. That, that would make the most sense in the world to me. Mm-hmm. Titans beat the Bills, who I think are one of the best teams in the league. Mm-hmm. And then you get beat by the Chiefs. Exactly. Because NFL. Mm-hmm. It seems like they did that last year. <clears throat> they did. They did. Yeah. So hold on on the Kansas City Chief hatred. We're not saying that they suck. We're just saying that right now things are down, and you're going to have to rebound to do it. And I think you can this week. I do too. Number seven, Dallas Cowboys. They're so damn good. Offensively, I get that they still give up a bunch of yards. Defensively, I don't care. I still think this is a championship caliber team, and I've, I've got them in my top five. I'm not quite there because my top five is pretty sacred at this point. Mm-hmm. My top five has become what my top four was uh, the first four weeks of the season. Right. It's going to be real hard for you to break into that. Yeah. Uh, I look at Dallas and go, there are some deficiencies. I have a massive problem with their time management, their clock management, mm-hmm. their game management. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Dak Prescott is phenomenal. This offense is phenomenal. They beat the piss out of the New England Patriots. You just couldn't score. Right. And I think you got screwed on one of them. So I, I didn't denigrate them. It's hard to go on the road and win in the NFL. Uh, and, and frankly, that game was never close. The score was close. Yeah. The action on the field was not all that close. And what matters most to me is to be able to be in a situation like that 
and come up big and win the yeah, game. He figured out how to win. And Dak Prescott has been doing that. And now you have a bye week where maybe Mike McCarthy can sit down with a stopwatch and figure yeah. out how clocks work. I heard the stat yesterday that uh, Dak Prescott's quarterback rating, I think it was in the last five minutes of games, is like 149. Uh, that's pretty good. And that's insane. 156.3 is perfect. You're right. So, you know, to me that matters. To me, it matters that they cannot, uh, or, or that when it comes down to crunch time, regardless of the dumbass decisions that Mike McCarthy might make against the clock or whatever, despite that, your talent is lifting you to wins. And that can carry you a, f a long way. Oh, yeah. And I, you look I, at the I, one loss that they had was, you know, last second to, loss to Tom. the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Sure, exactly. That's why they're in my top five. Because I can't remember the last time I saw an offense this damn good. Oh, wait, maybe it was the Kansas City Chiefs when they won the Super Bowl. Yep. It's that good. <laughs> it's that good. The Green Bay Packers are number six, and I have them at six as well in my power rankings. I think it's hard not to. I, I really do. I think it's hard to not have the top, same top five teams yep. that virtually all of us have at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, and I look at Green Bay, and I just go, your defense is going to hold you back. Mm -hmm. uh, your lack of weapons is going to hold you back. But you have Aaron Rodgers. Yep. So that's worth a lot. Mm-hmm. That and Devontae Adams and Aaron Jones. You that's know what that'll worth get you? a lot. You know what that'll get you? Uh, to the NFC Championship uh, game. No doubt. It'll no doubt get you to the NFC Championship game, and you very may, very well may have make your third trip to the NFC Championship game and lose. I, if they could. I, I just look at that team like they're missing something. I would love to see them make a move. Mm -hmm. uh, I have routinely said Brandon Cooks. I'm going to keep saying it, hoping that if I put it into the atmosphere, I will turn it into a, a real-life thing. Well, we kept saying that last year with yep. Will Fuller, and it never happened. Yeah, well, they tried, but yeah. they couldn't come to an agreement. So I'm hoping if I keep saying Brandon Cooks to Green Bay that eventually <laughs> someone somewhere will hear me, and they'll put it in a bottle, and it'll wind up in Green Bay in a chunk of ice, and Brian Gutekunst will uh, uh, do it. Right. At number five, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Your secondary is bad, ba bad, ba bad, ba bad, ba bad, ba bad, bad. Yep. You just get a little tiny ding on that one. Cause, cause you died a little on the inside doing that. I did. It hurt me to do that, but you can't keep a player healthy. You got Richard Sherman came in, and oh, lo and behold, hey, he's gone. He's he lasted miss, uh, an hour. Yeah, he's gonna miss several weeks now, and you know, a couple of weeks, you can get Jamel Dean back. And, That'll be at least some improvement. Uh, Sean Murphy Bunting will come back as well in a couple of weeks. So the early season injuries, the best way you can spin this as a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan is to go, you know what, we're going to get healthy at the right time. Hopefully we can, you know, skip out on any other injuries. Lenny is running the ball like a motherfucker right now. Yeah. And I mean, there's a lot to like. Here's the problem. Of all the teams in the top five, you're the only one that hasn't had a win where I went. Yeah. You beat the week one Cowboys. Guess what? They've gotten better every week. Yep. Uh, and your other four win wins don't mean jack poopy to me. Nope. And guess what? There are about six in a row here that aren't going to mean shit either. The Saints. You go to the Saints and win. <laughs> okay. Now, I will say this. You go to the Saints and lose. Uh, who, you are not going to want to be here on that Monday. Oh, are you going to do your little touchdown dance? Uh, no, um, I, I will drop them like a rock. Oh, I got you. Because you're, you haven't beaten anybody. Right. I mean, and yes, you have, in large part, handled most of these teams. Mm -hmm. But there's still some, I, I just look at the defense and go, why are you not getting better pass rush than you do? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you have legitimate pass rush talent. You still don't get there. And I have a thought. I can't tell you that this is a thing, but it might be a thing. The greatest quarterback ever to live can only take you so far. Yeah. At the end of the day, coaching is going to have to help. And I don't feel like Bruce Arians is doing that on, an, on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. I have never thought he was a particularly good coach. Mm -hmm. He's fine. Uh, but basically every accolade I can give him has been Tom Brady driven. So I'm starting to worry that it's possible you're not going to – and you could turn it on in December. Who knows? Mm -hmm. This schedule is not going to tell us much. You're certainly going to win this division, so you're you're going to live about right where you're at mm -hmm. because you don't you really don't have the impressive on your schedule. 
until late in the schedule. Right. So, I mean, at, oh, you're five and one. Cool. There's several teams that are five and one. Mm-hmm. And your secondary scares the heber jeebers out of me. Yep. They're four for me. That's 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 as low as I can go so far right now. Um, part of me wanted to put Dallas ahead of them, but I couldn't just no. yet. They're not there. Did yet. you have Baltimore ahead of them? I did not have Baltimore. That ahead of them. doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> that doesn't make it. because you're the overreactionary guy, and they just had the best win of the week by a lot. Yeah. There's still something though. There's still something about this team that I can't put my finger on. What, what is wrong? I don't know. After watching what they just did to the LA Chargers, how you could say anything is wrong. There is nothing wrong with this team. Mm. They have four geriatric running backs, or three geriatrics and a young kid that they don't trust. And maybe that's what it is that I just don't believe that I it's don't, sustainable. I don't care less. I could give two rats asses who runs the ball for them. Mm-hmm. Oh, Latavius Murray. Latavius Murray's hurt. Cool. Devontae Freeman will do it. Oh, Devontae Freeman gets hurt. Uh, okay, Devontae or uh, Le'Veon Bell will do it. Mm-hmm. Well, Le'Veon Bell gets hurt, uh, Tyson Williams will do it. I, I can keep doing this. I can do this with street free agents if I wanted to. Mm-hmm. Because this team is just really, really, really hard to stop. And I didn't see much of Rashad Bateman, but I saw enough to go, that's a weapon. Yeah. Uh, Hollywood Brown's the highest rated wide receiver in the AFC. So, I mean, you just add all these things up and then you look at all the talent on the defense and go, oh, shit, that, they're just a pain in the ass to deal with. Right. Oh, they lost to the Raiders in week one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than that, there's really not anything to ding them on. So, to me, yeah. it was an easy decision to have them at four. They have broken my top five. And like I said, my top five is going to be hard. It's going to be hard to break because I feel very, very good about the five teams in the top five. Yeah. Well, the Baltimore Ravens are no doubt on the short list of teams that can win the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I don't know. I just don't have them there yet. And that's not... It's not a slight. It was It was just how much I, I just think don't of the other teams, it. I guess. I, I, I just don't get it. They had the best win on the board. You're higher on the Chargers than I am, and they just smoked them. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, it'd be one thing. But you'd, take the, you'd take the Ravens over the Bucks right now? Easy? Because how are you going to stop Lamar Jackson? But, I mean, what are you going to do? Shoot him? <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, Hollywood Brown, how are you going to stop him? How are you going to stop Rashad Bateman? Uh, with that Mark offensive Andrews? line, I think we can get after him. You hadn't gotten after anybody else, and you played markedly worse teams with markedly worse offensive lines. So I, I just think you're doing. I, I think you're projecting with one team and not with the other, and that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Okay. I just watched one of these teams have the best win on the board. They mm-hmm. were five for me last week. They had to go up. Yeah. I mean, I'm not one that's overreactionary, but at the end of the day, you beat a team that was four for me last week. Mm-hmm. I, I, it seems at home. Whoop de do. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. beat the piss out of them. Right. You broke their spirit. I mean, good God, they looked they looked like a spent fighter <laughs> at the end of the first quarter. Right. So, I mean, you got to do something with them. So, okay. Baltimore, I got Baltimore at four. All right, and the top three, we all know who they are. Dum, dum, dum. The Los Angeles Rams. You finally have them in the right spot. Uh, or at least I, I, I agree with where you've got uh, the Arizona Cardinals above the L.A. Rams this mm-hmm. time. Because I don't think you had that last week, did you? I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. My top three is exactly the same as it was last week. Oh, okay. So the L.A. Rams at number three. That team's fantastic. No doubt. Their high side is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I worry about depth. And I worry about how they're going to match up with certain teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, specifically, the two teams directly in front of them in this power ranking. Because you got Jalen Ramsey. And outside of that, you got a lot of... Mm-hmm. You got a lot of question marks. Uh, I like the offense. I mean, I really don't have anything to ding them on offensively. Defensively, I, I just saw you get kind of unveiled against the Cardinals. And I don't forget those things easily. Especially, especially when that team doesn't lose. Right. So, I mean, for me, the Rams, yeah, you had a great win over the Giants. You squished them like a bug, just exactly like you were supposed to. Mm -hmm. You did exactly what you were supposed to, which means you stay exactly where you were. Yep. They're my number three as well. My number two this week is your number one, the Buffalo Bills. I told you nothing that could happen is going to change my opinion. Yeah. They went into Nashville, and they should have beaten, I shouldn't say should, they very easily could have beaten a good Titans team mm-hmm. on a night that Derrick Henry was pretty good, mm-hmm. but you still contained him reasonably well. If you take away one 76-yard run, it was a pretty mediocre night. Oh, he had three touchdowns. Cool. One of them was from the four-yard line. One of them was from the seven. Right. 
what the hell do you expect them to do? It would have been done their that average. Forever. It would have been their average. Yeah. If I they mean, had stopped that 176 yard run. Where there was a hold. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say that constantly. <laughs> because it was egregious. Right. But if it had been stopped, if it had been called back, he'd had 76 yards and two touchdowns, and, I just and that's feel, their average. And I feel, here's exactly how I feel about what happened with Tennessee. And this is what I didn't want to say. And I shouldn't say I didn't want to say it. I didn't because I didn't think it happened. Tennessee just needed that game way more. Yep. Buffalo can be on cruise control for the vast majority of the season because guess what? Their whole division combined has four wins. Mm -hmm. Four. And two of them are against each other. One of them is against the Tennessee Titans, which is still the most mind-boggling thing I think I have ever said out loud. (laughs) Buffalo doesn't have to have these games. They know. Mm -hmm. They know definitively they're at worst going to be the three seed in the playoffs because Tennessee, I would say Tennessee and Indianapolis are, I don't think they're as good and their schedules are markedly tougher. Mm -hmm. So they're going to lose more games. Buffalo's schedule, I just look at it and go, good God, you're going six games in that division, standing on your head. Mm Mm-hmm. Buffalo's going to win 12 or 13 games. Okay, you lost Tennessee and Tennessee in yeah. a game that they needed or Indianapolis is going to be nipping on their heels. Yeah. They just needed it more than you. That doesn't change anything that I think. Right. I still love Arizona. Arizona's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I was really impressed with what they did to Cleveland, but at the end of the day, it was Cleveland. And see, that's where the, di- that's where the difference falls in between you and I, mm-hmm. is, is that you are impressed that they did that to Cleveland. I am. I go, cool, you beat the piss out of a team you should have beaten the piss out of. Mm-hmm. So for me, uh, it's, it's not a huge accolade, but it would have been a demerit if it was close. Yeah. Buffalo, I'm not going to ding you for beating a desperate team that had lost Two games that, one that they probably shouldn't have. Mm-hmm. And so I just, I just look at it and go, okay. Yeah. I still believe in Josh Allen. Stephon Diggs was fantastic. I don't really care that you can't run. The defense is insane. Mm-hmm. And with Arizona, there's just a little something that I think that pass rush from Buffalo would mess with them. I am. You I- can only scheme yourself good for so long. And I feel like a lot of what Arizona does is scheme themselves good. Mm-hmm. The, re- the receivers are good. The quarterback's very good. Mm-hmm. The pass rushers are good. There's a lot of other positions on this team that I go, but are you really good? Because you haven't been good in large part, and now you are. So is that a product of situation? Like, I mean, it's not like they played bad teams either. No. I just feel like when you lace it up and go hat on a hat, I think Buffalo would beat them. That's it. That's the only difference. I think it would be a very close, very fun game to watch between these two. And I if hope it if this ends up being the Super Bowl, I hope it it's going to be one of the greatest Super Bowls we've ever seen. I however, firmly hope it happens. Yeah. However, I can't put a two-loss team ahead of an undefeated team. I can because I don't care. Especially when they, well, I feel like you should care. Why? I feel like you should care because the teams that they have beaten says something to me. The Arizona Cardinals beating the Tennessee Titans the way they did in week one. To me, I think that was an impressive uh, win. And I'll level with you. I've watched that game tape uh, a full time and a half. Mm-hmm. I would wager 30 teams in the NFL would have beaten them because they were a fucking disaster. Mm-hmm. I feel like you hold that game into you, – you don't remember exactly how that game went. Of Tennessee couldn't get out of their own way. Mm-hmm. Now, have they recovered from there? Yeah, but that's not the team Arizona played. Right. If Arizona played them right now, what would you set the spread at? Neutral field, Tennessee, Arizona. That'd be Arizona minus five. That's too high to me. I ain't, I'm not giving a field goal. I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't give a field goal to any team in the top ten. Mm-hmm. Two and a half, somewhere in there. Nothing more. Okay. And I think they're all close. I'm not holding one week against Buffalo. And mm-hmm. I, I just look at Arizona and go, I, I, and this is not a ding on Arizona. Yes, you have a win at the Rams. That mm-hmm. was a bit of a trap game mm-hmm. because it was after they played Tommy touchdowns in the in the Bucks. The Titans game, they were a disaster. And your other four wins are against the Vikings, the Jaguars, the 49ers with Trey Lance, and the Browns, who I don't like. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for me, I, I watched Buffalo beat the piss out of Kansas City, a team that's represented the AFC in the Super Bowl two years in a row. Mm-hmm. That does still mean something to me. That's a better win than... The Arizona Cardinals beating L.A. in their house? I'm not going to say it's a better win. I had Buffalo higher going in. Mm-hmm. This is, see, for me, this falls into, I'm not going to say this is like NCAA uh, top 25 poll rankings. 
I don't let losses sway me that much, especially not coin flip games, mm -hmm. especially not on the road, especially not in prime time. There's a reason I said nothing could happen in that game that would sway my opinion, because I meant it. Mm -hmm. that, that wasn't me bullshitting you. There was nothing that could happen in that game short of Buffalo giving up 550 yards and getting beat by four touchdowns mm -hmm. that I would have gone, huh, maybe I should revisit that. And that's not what happened. A desperate team played desperate, and they beat them. Mm -hmm. Now, if Buffalo played, is there a team in the NFL that I would have the Buffalo Bills as an underdog to? My answer to that question is no. So they're my number one. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else is welcome to rank how they want to. That's how I rank. <laughs> I am a Vegas guy, and, and I look fine. at this as to how I would bet it. And that's fine. Uh, I disagree. I think right now that no other team in the NFL has proven a number one ranking more than the Arizona Cardinals. With their and I don't disagree. By the way, I don't yeah. disagree with that. Yeah. I had Buffalo as the best team in the NFL mm -hmm. going into this season. Mm -hmm. The Pittsburgh Steelers lost, knocked them down a spot. Mm -hmm. They have never been lower than second. I know. There's something that plays into that. Of my preconceived notion has been confirmed. Mm -hmm. So Arizona is a team that I thought had coaching issues. We've shown through Sue at six weeks. That's not a problem. Yep. Absolutely. I they think have the a more impressive resume than the Bills do. Yep. I have finally come around to your side. The Arizona Cardinals are the best team in the NFC. Agreed. And best team in the NFL, in my opinion. But... It is what it is. We got a new week coming our way, week seven. And as always, it's going to be unpredictable as hell. You never know. Weird things happen in this league every week. So uh, who could fall in this list next week? Just have to wait and see. All kinds of them. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. We got game previews coming out tomorrow. Uh, game recaps got, well, let's say they got struck by technology. Yep. Sorry. Uh, there's just two of us, and we don't have the time to record things two times. That's right. Be sure to uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you get all of our content here and join us live, of course, every weekday morning at 10 a.m. here in the Wicked Weed studio, wickedweedbrewing.com. Drink different. We will see you next time.